Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our afternoon session. I hope you're ready to have some fun this afternoon. Give me a big yay if you're ready to have some fun. Woo, yes, awesome. Now we have a fabulous team here this afternoon and they kind of need no introduction, but I'll give a very brief introduction. If you're not familiar with the Girls Programming Network, you will know a lot after today. And we are in the hands of absolute professionals here. And so we have Renee, who's leading the team over here. Renee, give us, yes. Ooh. And we have Alex. And we have Amanda. So um, I know the great work that these uh, ladies do, and um, I'm sure they're going to inspire you this afternoon. You have paper on the table, which means we're going to get our hands dirty, which is super fun. So um, let's have some fun. So I'm going to hand over to Renee. Come on up. Ooh. Give them a hand. Mm. Excellent. Thank you for coming today. I probably have a clicker. Yes. Yeah, yeah that's cool. Uh, yeah, so thank you for coming to our talk on creating the Girls Club community based learning for plugging the leaky pipeline of women in tech. Today, we're going to tell you some of the things we've learned along the way. GPN, Girls Programming Network, has been running for 11 years. We've learned a few things about making your own pipeline. Pipeline's thrown around a lot, which is a bit interesting. It's like this amorphous blob of like, uh, the pipeline exists, it's leaky, and women and tech, and it's not good enough, but like, what is the pipeline? How can we fix it? It seems something like, maybe the government needs to fix the pipeline, a very infrastructure -y. But today, we're going to tell you about how the pipeline is actually a series of straws. And you too can make your own straw. Um, we've got a lot of straws taped together. Uh, so you can be any straw or a series of straws. And we're going to tell you today about our series of straws in the pipeline, which is the Girls Programming Network. Uh, make sure to look at your straw on your table if you need inspiration at any point. <laughs> yes. So, I am Renee, I'm a software engineer and educator and I'm all about cultivating communities and making sure we've got, you know, women in tech and girls and feeling supported. I, yeah, I'm at Grok Learning, I'm the Girls Programming Network, I'm supported by Data61, I'm a tutor at the National Computer Science School. This is Alex, hello. <laughs> you don't have a microphone, you can probably use this one if you so desire. Can you all hear me? Yeah. Yay, much better. <laughs> Amanda, be loud. Uh, I'm Amanda, I'm a secondary teacher. A long time ago, I was in IT, uh, and then I retrained, and now I teach, and I'm a computer education specialist at the ACT. Uh, and I'm also the president of the ICT Educated New South Wales Professional Teachers Association. Uh, you might have heard of QSite if you're in Queensland, uh, and I'm a teacher of the National Computer Science School and Challenge. Yeah, cool, yes. So many logos we do, we like kids and tech and coding and things, and that's probably why you're here too. So you're in the right place. Firstly, we're going to tell you about the Girls Programming Network. We provide free coding workshops for girls. It's all about getting your hands dirty with code, authentic programming experiences. It's all run by women and gender diverse people to make sure that girls are getting exposed to different kinds of people who all get to be involved in technology and are awesome at it. Uh, we have high school girls and some upper primary students as well. They come, they're all different levels of ability. They may, like some are complete beginners and some have been coming to GPN for five years and could do anything. Uh, yeah, and we're all about no barriers to entry. You don't even need to know what coding is. You don't even need to know that you don't know what coding is. You can just sign up and then we'll figure out where you can go and like how to have the best day when you come along. So. That's, we started in Sydney 11 years ago, and in the last maybe four, four years now, we've been expanding around the country. Uh, so we've now got nodes in six locations and counting. Uh, so more to come. And yeah, and what we're trying to do is spread what we value. And we'll tell you how it came to the values a bit later. So we're all about spreading the ability to challenge girls, but like with authentic, like, authentic programming experiences that they can accomplish and feel great about. It has to be fun, of course because that's why you're there. And social, because you want to be able to meet people like you, do activities, and then tell your friends and bring them along as well to like just kill those stereotypes, not about them. Uh, we've got our role models there, our tutors, showing you not only you can reach for the stars, you can, you know, people are always like, you can be anything, you can be an astronaut, but like they don't tell you how to be an astronaut or like you actually like, oh, you might have to become an American citizen if you want to work for NASA and it's like a lot of steps. So with our tutors right there, you can see aspirational people as like, oh, you're actually only two years older than me. Like I could just, if I do this, 
for my, you know, year 12, and then I graduate, and I can do what you're doing, and I can be you, and then I can be her over there who's working at that really cool company. So just having all these different role models there, you can see every step of your way. So yeah, we're all about diversity, different kinds of people. We're, you know, whether you're super into sports or dancing or golf or anything, you can be into those things and playing the trombone and coding at the same time. You don't have to be a super nerdy girl. You can be a girly girl or a tomboy. It doesn't matter. You can come here and be part of the network. So you can meet friends and you know, come along, meet them next time, find people who you can spend time with who you might not know at school. Uh, and find mentors and you know find people across the country who are doing things like you. So we're all about our values and they're what we use to guide ourselves in this expansion. So we're going to do our first activity, which Alex, do you want to tell us about the activity? Do you want to hand out M&Ms? I will hand out M&Ms. It's a very important part of the process. And write it down oh, yes. <laughs> on your post-its. So you've got post-its and pens and butcher's paper, so write it down. Oh, hello. Cool. Now I have a microphone. Yay. Um, so yeah, so write it down uh, and then pass the M&M packet to the next one. You can then eat that M&M. Great. Um, and then that next person's going to pull out an M&M and do the same thing. You know, keep going around. Uh, if you run out of M&Ms, mm. just put your hands up. We, we have, have more. Many, we many have many more. bags to top you up. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you run out of M&Ms, just put your hands up. Uh, and we'll come around. Uh, does anybody have any questions before we start? Yep, cool. Um, you may also want to introduce yourself to your table. Yes, um, and like so where you're from and stuff. Yeah, and yeah, cool. That's, that's it. Yay, cool. We're going to do that for a few minutes and yeah. we'll tell you when you have to stop. Also, you might run out of M&Ms and then we'll probably just stop because we'll have no questions. Yes. Yeah, cool. Yes. Go. <laughs> okay. Can you put your hands up if not everyone at your table has had an M&M yet? So yeah, yeah, okay, you have two more minutes, speed answers, and then we're going to do the next part. <laughs> okay, has everyone had a go now? Put your hand up if you haven't had an M&M. You're, you're currently having the M&M. Okay, you have 30 seconds. Anyone, any groups who have finished the round of M&Ms, we're going to do one more thing. We've got, you're going to have a minute to look at the things you've written down and choose up to five words that are the things that summarize the things that you would value in changing about how things, the system as it is currently. Okay, a minute, go. Okay, so you should all have five words. Yes, no. Some words. Some words, up to five, hopefully not more than five. Um, cool, so what we're gonna do is everybody at their table is going to point to someone on their table that is going to read out those five words. You're going to group delegate someone <laughs> to read out those five words. OK. Are we going to okay. count them into the, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Go, go table by table. Hello. OK. Guys? <laughs> Not go well. Are we ready to go, Alex? Yes, we are ready to go. Cool. Okie dokie, table number right. A. So who is your delegate? Hello. What are your values? Our five words for this table um, are diversity, community, opportunity, value, and education. Mm, nice. All right, who is your delegate? Alex. Okay. Um, so we have community, communication, breaking barriers, networking, um, female empowerment, and discrimination. Cool. I like it. Hopefully anti-discrimination. <laughs> uh, who is your delegate? We had empowerment, collaboration, leadership, youth and education. Mm. Delegate? Oh, great. Uh, we had knowledge sharing, representation and starting early. Nice. Cool. And delegate? Um, we had inspired, empowered, 
fun, useful, and practical. And delegate. <laughs> uh, we had allies, learn, motivation, diversity, and community. Cool. So those are some great words. Yeah. There are some common ones, community and education and yeah, diversity. Cool. I like it. Yeah. I'm like, oh, maybe we need more than six values. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so many good words out there. Shall we move on to the next part? Okay, so now we're just going to give you a bit of a history lesson of how we got from something that didn't exist to where we are now uh, over the 11 years of GPN's existence and some of the things that like were hard along the way and what we've learnt because this grew over a really long period of time. It was really grassrootsy and you know it started small and it started to grow. But now we kind of know how to do it and we know how other people could take what we've learnt and do it faster so you didn't have to wait 11 years to have places around Australia or something with whatever you want to do. Or maybe you just want to have one place in one classroom or something. So up to you. Yes, but what we've done. So uh, long before the three of us were part of GPN, we, GPN got started 11 years ago. And it was like, what will we do? We want to get uh, girls involved. Um, and it was also about improving your skills as a woman through teaching. So it's always had like those full, full pipeline aspects, even if it wasn't intending to have them. Uh, so they've played around with after school programs and like every week and every fortnight it was really hard because the students would drop out over the time because they missed a couple of lessons and then they couldn't catch up. So eventually they switched to the workshop model that we have today. So now we run a GPN workshop once every term and you can just drop in, you don't have to be, you don't have to come along and sign up for multiple things. So it's super easy to sign yourself up and you're like, it's one day, what do I have to lose? I didn't have to have any prerequisite knowledge. So that's our little community, and we started to grow. And by the time I joined, and maybe when Alex was a student, we had like 40, 40 kids um, in two classrooms, uh, which was up from previous times when I know some of, some of the people who were students who were at this conference as well, they'd go and they were the only student there that week. And there'd be three tutors, and there'd be one student, and I'm like, this is a bit awkward. So yes, now we've got 40, 40 students. And then, um, so then at some point, uh, I took over running GPN. And it was already kind of starting to be a point where it was like, it's kind of growing-ish, but it doesn't, we don't really have any structure and things. So I kind of went, OK, I thought I was actually, many of you, if you know me, we won't actually know this, but I thought I was just signing up to take over for one time to fill in. Um, <laughs> And this is me, like, five years later. <laughs> so yes, I'm here now. But I was like, here's a bunch of stuff that you got, like, people have been saying, oh, we should add some unplugged games. And then you know, we could add a few things. So I'm like, OK, why don't we just do it? Let's just put those in. So we kind of started to have some more shape to things. We added some mentor hangs, which is like talking to the tutors and having special time for the older kids to do that. We kind of started to have more shape and identity. And like the parts that were always there became stronger, more amplified what we were about. So uh, you know, we started to grow, and we had so many kids. and. We were having to struggle to get enough tutors to be in the room to help them all. And at some point, that wasn't a problem anymore because the real factor was that we'd filled up the entire building. We only have 180 computers, and it was like, oh, we're just out of computers. What are we going to do? There's so much demand for kids to learn to code. Girls are super keen. Who knew? So we're like, OK, let's just take over the world. So we started trying to take over the world. And it was hard at first because we knew how to run a really great workshop, but then trying to tell other people what was important was really difficult. So we're like, no, 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 no. This is important. That's, like, that's a fake version of it. It just felt a bit weird. It's like somebody else trying to make your recipe um, just by observing you cook it without you know, following the recipe, which is hard because we didn't know the recipe we were using. We just did it you know, by eyeballing the ingredients. So it was hard because we didn't know what we wanted other people to do. We couldn't communicate it. And it was frustrating for them to be on the other side being like, that's not right. So we spent a lot of time thinking about you know, what were the actual values. And that's how we came down to the values. What are the parts that are essential to GPN? What make it GPN? And what are the parts that just are the things we've been doing for a while, but they just happen to be there? And we could actually do them other ways. So by doing this, we came down to the six values and also the other parts that are not so important and gave more room for other people to have ownership in the program. So we could get their passion, our passion, put it together and make like a passion smoothie or something. And yeah, <laughs> been inspired by the, 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 the snacks. And uh, yeah, so then we're, we're here now. We've got six nodes. World well, domination still pending. 
but you know, we've got six nodes and growing, and we're still learning how to communicate what we need to do, because not only do we need to know what we're doing ourselves, do we need to document it, but we need to account for all the different regions we're going to, and every place has a different story. So over the time, we've had our own growing pains in Sydney when we tried to you know, grow, and there were so many girls that wanted to come in, and we had to go, OK, well, we can't run the same content unless we have the same ratio of tutors. We need one tutor for every three students. So every time three students up, I have to go, I need to find another woman in tech to teach them to come along who wants to volunteer a bunch of their time, which is tricky. So first, we were just reaching into the NCSS program, which runs a summer school. Uh, we went to you know, their graduates. We went to the people who were tutoring there. And that, that was the people who mainly made up the cohort already. So we had to go, we need to make some new friends. So we had to just do some hardball industry befriending. We have in all the newsletters, just make all the friends and get them to bring their friends as well. So that's one way to get people in, make friends with more universities and get all these people in. But at the same time, that still was hard because we, we, we have this catch-22 of there not being enough women in tech to teach the girls who want to become women in tech. So stuck in this loop. So we made do, and we also took on board people who were keen to learn to code, who just, they didn't know how to code, but they wanted to give something back. I have a lot of you know, swing dancer friends or rock climbing friends, and they're like, that's a really cool program. I'm like, would you like to be involved? And now we have accountants and lawyers and administrators all pitching in to help out, because they learned to code, and they learned something they didn't know they could do, and now they're also giving back to the community. So I'll teach you to code if you teach a child to code is pretty much my motto. <laughs> Yes, so we had, we had to bring more people in. We had to diversify how we trained them because previously everyone was involved in education and were like proficient programmers. We needed to widen the range of how we trained them and also the material needed to become better, more self-sufficient. It couldn't just be one person standing at the front of the classroom and everyone kind of followed along. We needed to add more structure. And we needed to train people up because they were becoming all this structure that we needed people to know what was happening and to be leaders in. So that was kind of how we grew the Sydney node until it could grow no more. Uh, and then we went on to our sharing pains, because sharing is hard. Uh, and we wanted, to, we wanted to give this to other people, but they also wanted to add their own flavor, which is very fair. If you're going to put a bunch of time and effort into something, and you can see ways that things could be better for your region. So we needed to work out what we were trying to communicate to people. What, what is GPN? How do we tell people what it is? And better working on communicating the vision to other people and saying where, where they can have their input and where we really needed them to stay on board. Because it's hard if you're not involved, you don't know what you don't know. So while we've been creating content for 10 years, it might be hard to see the actual nuance that we're putting into something. So putting time and effort into communicating that and actually giving them the tools to be involved in that process rather than boxed out of it was something we needed to put a lot of time and effort into. Uh, yes, so, and finally, we had our local differences, which is every time we go to a new node, there's something that doesn't quite work the same way as our node works, or a different node works for that matter. So in Sydney, we didn't know anything about rapidly growing a program because it started 11 years ago, and then a friend brought a friend, and a friend brought a friend, and a friend brought a friend, until we didn't have any computers left. But now we have programs that are like, we're ready to go. We've got enough room for 50 girls. Where do I get them? And we know there's girls out there who want to learn to code, but how do we get them in the door? So we need to work with local networks, which we need to connect to. And we also need to connect into all different regions, like different universities, different industries all over the place. At the same time, each region has limitations on these. There's regions that have less technical presence. We have our uh, regional nodes, which are being run by school teachers, which, who don't have the same kind of experience as us. So we need to consider what's going on in each region and what they have going for them, and what are going to be hard factors. For instance, everyone wants to jump on board and give money to a metropolitan node because they're going to hire the people who tutor there. Everyone wants to hire a woman in tech, and this is how you just get a bunch of them. But people up in Cairns are struggling to get funding because they're not, they're, we don't have the same big technical companies looking to do that process there. So we have to figure out a different thing for every place. So with our solutions, we've kind of noticed you need to, firstly, be guided by your values in everything that you do um, to make sure you're delivering the same program, but also codifying that 
writing down what's important and writing down what's not important. And also stating the obvious, things that seem really relevant and like important, you just do it to me because I do it every single day. If you're coming in from the outside, you might not realize there's an easier way to do it. So yeah, something that puzzled me for a while was like some nodes started up and I was like, cool, so just email out the tutors. And they're like, oh, but how? And like, well, on your mailing list. Oh, that's a great idea. We should get one of those. So things like that, having those written down so people can just pick up the easy tools that you already have in place. And then finally, we need to work with the strength of each individual person and get everybody to work together. Some of our nodes have less technically um, capable leaders, but they have other real strengths. For instance, one of our nodes has someone who's just great at getting grants. And they can just send tutors on planes over and over and over again to visit us so we can just train them up. Rather than being, then them having to be in-house and give them the training, it's like, we'll just put you on a plane across the country and that'll be fine. So working with um, skills in those locations or skills that can be done online. For instance, we don't have a lot of technical people in Mackay to be those inspirational figures, but you can jump on Skype and it turns out they're really excited to see you on the internets. Yes. <laughs> yeah, screaming girls in Skype is very exciting. So yeah, working together, we get, have people over the country who can bring all the parts together to make it successful. So the next part of our activity, I will hand over to Alex for, and we're going to turn those values into an idea. Cool. Yes, so we're going to make a to-do tree, and this is one that we made earlier. We thought that we would put it up here, but this room is bigger than we thought, so it would be tiny. So it's a good thing we took a photo. Um, so at the top, we have uh, the values that GPN has. Um, and then branching from that, we have what are like the necessities that come from those values. So for example, um, if we want to have a diverse uh, event, then making it free is really important. So as many socioeconomic uh, girls can come to our event as possible. Uh, having a whole range of experience levels makes it diverse, fun, and also challenging all at the same time. Um, but making it a hands-on activity rather than a, I'm gonna sit and listen to industry sponsors, makes it more challenging. Uh, putting on the weekend makes it more social. Uh, and having uh, women-only uh, tutors makes it more relevant for the girls. So that's kind of how you get like your first layer. You're like, okay, so if I want to make an event that is as diverse as possible, what does my event need to be in order to make that happen? Uh, so this is the kind of time that you want to start thinking about, like, what event do you guys want to be running? And this is like a mind experiment. It doesn't actually have to be an event that you're going to run next week. Um, Make it crazy. <laughs> yeah, you can be crazy. You're like, okay, we're going to have giraffes come. Um, <laughs> and we're going to have a crazy time with giraffes. Um, so that's kind of the start. And then from each level that you write, you want to then go, okay, so if I want to make my event free, what do I have to do? Okay, well, then the tutors have to be volunteers because we can't pay them because we don't have enough money if the event is free. Um, if we want all experience levels and hands-on, maybe we should be making our own content to make that happen. Um, so then that's kind of how you get the tree. You just go, okay, so if I need to do this, what do I have to do? Eventually, you'll hit a point where you're like, well, to do this, I just have to do this. So, um, for example, uh, to write your own content, you have to write content. <laughs> that's it. Um, so then when you get to those points, that's the point at which you start your to-do list where you're like, okay, so if I want to write content, I have to write content. So the to-do list we have is the uh, last one, which is like host a tutor, get together, uh, and we can start writing content. Um, so hopefully by the end of your tree, you kind of have a bunch of things that you could actually do um, to start this event. Um, does that kind of make sense? Cool. Uh, there are some prompts on the left to help you kind of like figure out what you should be writing. Um, and if you have any questions or you get stuck, if you stick your hand up, me and Renee and Amanda will help you out. Yeah, um, we've got yeah. five minutes. So do it five minutes? Cool. Yeah, yeah, I think that's about right. Okay, I hope everyone's gone well with their to-do list so far. Don't worry, we're not done with this idea. We're just going to give you a few more bits and pieces to like inspire your, your thoughts now. Uh, so... This part is called the devil's in the details. So we've got ideas for events coming up and it's like, yeah, we're gonna have people, they're gonna do a coding activity or they might do some mentoring or they talk to some people or just see a lecture or something. 
but we didn't really have the details. What is, like, we can, everyone can order pizza, everyone can book a lecture theatre, everyone can do those bits and pieces. What makes your event your event? So we're talking about the you factor. So what are you trying to convince people to be like, come to this event, it's going to be awesome because... So that's what we're going to decide now. And we're going to work on how you actually pull that off because when uh, you have something that is yours, it's probably something that doesn't already exist. So it's probably going to be something you can't buy, something you have to build yourself. And finally, we're going to talk about the finishing touches. What makes an event an experience, not just a thing I did on the weekend? Oop, that's the wrong button. OK, cool. So what is the GPN factor? What do we think about when we say, come to GPN, it's going to be awesome. We're going to build a really cool project. It's going to be a game, or it's going to, you know, you're going to be able to invent uh, new text automatically by smooshing together uh, Dr. Zeus uh, rhymes and Harry Potter. Or you're going to be able to play a game with your friend. Or we're going to you know, encrypt some stuff with a Caesar cipher so you can pass secret messages to people. These are the exciting things we pass on to people. Like, what are we actually doing? We're also going to play some games. Here, we're like using Play-Doh to uh, make circuits, logic gates that have lights and cool stuff. Or we're going to use um, Pokemon cards to make an AI, which we're going to write by hand. And also, you're going to get a chance to talk to some awesome women who work in industry or in university. And they were in high school just like two years ago. And they're going to tell you all about how, to, how you're going to survive and what you're going to do next. And you're going to be OK. We're going to talk about life. And it's going to be real. And you're going to love it. So those are like how we summarize the GPN factor. So when you want to figure out what your event is, what's your flavor, you're going to have to think about what are we actually doing? If you've got a speaker coming, who are they? If you're going to do a coding project, like how are you going to make that? Who's it for? What kind of experience do they need going in? So I'm going to show you in a second about how we actually make sure our coding project fits in the three and a half hours we have allotted for coding on the day. Uh, so yes, you need to work out what activities, when you get down to the details, meet your values. Because we could do a coding project, and it could actually just be like, you know, put, you know, run the code we wrote earlier on the Lego Mindstorm, but you didn't make it yourself, but you saw a robot go and you felt good. It wouldn't really meet our values of challenging. Uh, it might be fun, but it doesn't cover all our bases. Um, yes, yeah, so you need to look at what you're going to do, break it down into the day, and you have to always allow for extra time. How much time it takes to move children around from one room to another, it astounds me every single day, time. <laughs> They're just really slow, and it's just a lot of logistical stuff. So you allow for extra time and assess how feasible it is. Be like, oh, well, if we have one minute for you know lunch, that's probably not enough time. OK, so yes, we're going to break it down. And here's how we actually break down our actual content. So this is what we do to assess if a programming project is too hard to do at a workshop, or it's going to be too easy. So what we do is we look at our code, or we kind of think about, OK, if I was going to make a game of scissors, paper, rock, where I play against the computer, what might I need? I might need like an if statement. I might need a, I need a loop. I need some yeah, conditions. Uh, yeah, cool. And I'd have to ask for an input so they can say what they're going to play. Cool. These are the kinds of ideas that I'd be using if I was going to code that. So you kind of look at this, add up, OK, yeah, we need some points here, some points there. and then. We always aim for our events, because of how much time we have, how many tutors we have to support as well, we aim for about four, 50 to 60 points. Uh, so yeah, if this is something, we've got two different ones you can use. Uh, two, if you're going to do a coding event, so getting your hands dirty, which I always encourage people to do, um, this is how, something you could use to be like, OK, how big a project could I do? If you're doing something like every week we go to a school and we go back to the same school every week and we're going to have it for 10 weeks, and we have two hours each time, like how big a project could we make? This is something you could use to scope that out as well. Yes, so that's something you can use to break it down. Um, then after that, you need to work out how you're actually going to pull off the U factor. So we've got uh, all this stuff that you're like, cool, I've got to have this, I've got to make my own content, or I've got to, you know, build a robot that they get to play with, or something like, okay, we actually have to go and do that now. Okay, let's build a robot or something. Cool, let's do it. Uh, who do you need to do it? Do you need to train more people? Or is it, like, going to be something you need to build up over time? Maybe this time you don't build a robot, but you build, like, a cool like musical light button or something. And then over time, your people will develop the school skills you need to build the cool robot that you want to show the kids. So what, what do you need to do now to get to your idea later? And we need to be building up people to have the structure in place if you're like, yeah, so the idea is 
You know, we want to be everywhere. We want to be big. We want to be in every city in Australia. We need to train people up. Or maybe your idea is like, actually, we just want to be able to do something in schools and something that we can put online that other people can use. So thinking about how you want to do this, what kind of size you're thinking. Are you thinking one place? Are you thinking all of Australia, all of the world? Are you traveling? What's going to happen? And finally, it's the finishing touches. So these are the things that kind of make something be like, oh yeah, they really know what they're doing. And I went to a thing and it was great. Uh, so the, the things that you often forget as well, uh, so t-shirts, they're really cool. It's like, oh, now everyone feels like they're part of a thing. But you still have to get in early and order them and they have to come and you've got to get the right sizes and the right cuts and be inclusive and all those parts. You've got to remember to do that. You've got to remember to do it early. Uh, and you've got other parts like certificates, they're fun, um, but you've got to remember to make the template and get it all done. So there are all these finishing touches, it's that 80-20% rule. The final 20% will take 80% of the time. <laughs> so you can get your event together, you can order the pizza, and you can get the girls in the door, but then it's like, ah, oh, getting, you know, making sure each group has, each like, group of teachers has, you know, some confident people, some experienced people, some shyer people, you know, balancing all those out, knowing the people is the final touches that kind of bring something together and makes it more personal. So yes, now we're going to have another activity, which you're all going to do as an individual before you share your story with the rest of your group. And this is about, imagine you're a student who's just been to one of your events, or if your event's for women, you're a woman who's been to that, or maybe you're writing a thank you note to the people who organized it, one of these things, and it's going to be like on the weekend, or thank you very much for the workshop that we had, and things like that. So yeah, write a thing for three minutes to summarize how it's gone. Uh, I think you have like notepads on the desk, so you can use them, or if you want to use a sticky note, that's fine, um, up to you. Um, yeah. Mm, yes. <laughs> OK. Writing time is over. So now we're going to give you a minute each to read out your story to each other before we do the wrapping it up time. Yeah. yeah you don't have to read the whole story, just like, you know, quick recap of few Fave parts, minutes. yeah. 30 more seconds to share your ideas, your, your experience with your group before we do a sharing. <laughs> Love to share. All right, so like we did with the values, you're going to pick a delegate, and they're going to very, very quickly describe what your event is in a nutshell. Cool. So I'm sorry. I'm, I'm going to start over here, because you guys went first last time. All right. Who's your delegate? Hello. <laughs> you were too slow. Um, so ours was a, a meetup. Um, it's focused on industry. And we, d we offer a, a, an, a way of doing networking and some presentation from extra speakers. And the U factor that we thought about was pro it's, it's tailored for moms. And we provide on-site daycare on the meetup so that even if you have a kid after work that you have to pick up, you can bring him to the meetup. And then we obviously need some sponsors to do that and <laughs> that sort of stuff. So, yeah. Nice. Cool. I love it. All right, delegate, who is you? Um, so ours was um, a week-long boot camp for 16-year-olds to upskill, learn programming, and then our U factor was basically that we would invite lots of different people from lots of streams in STEM, so or tech, I mean, <laughs> and um, so that people can see that there's lots of different jobs. Thank you. All right, delegate at this back table. Do, 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 do. Ours is an um, engineering fair thing where at a primary school full day thing um, where you get uh, a wide variety of actual engineers to come and do hands-on activities or demonstrations or have exhibits that are interactive um, and all the kids can go and actually play with all the things and learn about the big variety of kinds of engineering there are. Um, and yeah, I guess the U thing was that the, the interactivity and the all the kinds of engineering. Yeah. Nice. Uh, this table, and delegate. Oh. Um, so our activity was an outreach event for university students to encourage them into um, the kind of topics they're 
my organisation is. I had these women help me design an outreach thing for my job. It's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> um, so the aims of it were to increase diversity in gender, um, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders and low SES. Um, the U factor was that in this workshop they would do authentic and unique work that they'd only really be able to do with us so that they'd be inspired to continue studying these things and then come and work for us. Um, <laughs> what was the final thing I had to talk about? Oh, that's it. Nailed it. <laughs> Super easy. Cool. Uh, delegate? Hello. Mm -hmm. okay. So our event was for second, uh, primary students in years sort of three to six. Um, the idea was that it would be an application-based program so that we could make sure that the students who were attending were most likely to get the most value out of that experience. Um, I think the U factor is that we would try and bring together all of the different networks that already exist to provide the best content and tutors and representation at the forum. Um, and... I think from a finishing touches point of view, I don't think we got that far, but we... Our, it's our, okay, you only have five minutes. <laughs> our, post, our post experience is that we would want people to think they want to do that again. Cool. Uh, and last table, delegate. So ours, um, our event is a careers fair, which is open for all within the um, community. Um, a mixture of industry associations, recruitment companies and educators being universities right through to secondary uh, schools. I guess there's an opportunity there for people to come and learn around what is available to them in the um, tech industry. Um, we would have round tables, which would be tables of specific interest where people could move from table to table, um, interactive kind of exercises within those tables, um, and a way be being able to exchange knowledge. So all of that kind of adds up to why we would be doing that, um, professional and personal development, education about uh, what's available to young women as they move forward with their career. Um, and opportunities to meet people who would be able to mentor them, tell them about courses of education and what was available in the community. Cool. Those are some great ideas. Yeah, I'm so excited to get the invites. Different um. ones, <laughs> yeah, so cool, which we hope we'll get out of our final activity, which we can do, you yeah. can do, and even you don't have to be here. Yes. Yes. So, uh, finally, thank you for coming and learning how you too can be a straw in the pipeline of, uh, of women in tech, or many straws stuck together. Yeah. Um, I hope you try it in your area or talk to people about it. Contact us if you need any help and if you want to be part of the GPN World Domination, so it's still pending, but you can join in too and help us buffer, then, yeah, contact us at gpn at ncss.edu.au. Yeah, it's been awesome hearing all of your awesome ideas. Yes, we, yes we're going to hand out postcards, which we'll do in the break um, after we wrap up. So we'll tell you about them now before we finish up and you can grab them there on your table. And the idea is with these. If there's something you like out of this thing today or out of all of Hopper, um, is there something you want to do in like the next three months? And it, we want you to write that down on this postcard and then also write your address down and hand it back to us. And we're going to mail this to you in three months time and then see, and you can see if you've done it. Who doesn't love getting mail, right? And it's so <laughs> colourful. Yeah, so if you want to do that um, and hand it back to us, let us, yeah, put it in our hands and we'll make sure it comes back to you. If you're like, I really want to be held accountable for this, or I want to be reminded of this in three months' time, yeah, do a postcard. Yeah, awesome. Ah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>